good morning. Sunday out here at Charlotte Motor Speedway here. And it is finals day. And uh, if you watched the previous vlog from uh, that showed yesterday's races, you're gonna know the stall boys were not particularly fast. We're, it, on the scale, we're fast as here, slow as here. We were much closer to the slow end. But it's been a ton of fun regardless. A lot of good people out here, family, racing, staying at the track. It's just a good time, man. Um, so we've taken some swings at it today, setup wise, and uh, we're gonna, yeah, we're not giving up. We're gonna try, try to find that speed. And you know, it's not all cart, definitely some driver too. So try to get everything dialed in and you know, make the best of it that we can. Some of us are up and at it. Some of us get in our driver's seat and go sit in our tent. Hey, good morning. Our last morning here on a Sunday from Charlotte, North Carolina. <laughs> Had a tough day Friday, and uh, and then things didn't get any any better on Saturday. And so you think, well, what do we do to make things right on a Sunday? And you're hoping you wake up and you've got that feeling that uh, that you've got something for them. I remember last year at the Nationals, I woke up and I thought, you know what, I, I've got I've got this package down. Well, I don't think any of stall racing has this package down. So we're gonna stay optimistic and we're not beat yet but uh it is uh it's been a challenge but <laughs> so challenging uh uh and but not discouraging because i've already heard talk of maybe maybe we'll come back next year so we're not beaten we're down and i'm not sure we're going to conquer it this year but uh we've had a lot of fun and uh getting out of state's been a good experience even if uh just a little bit humbling our boys jorge and miguel from jam vlog uh Thursday night went out to dinner at the fine establishment of Hooters um, came out to find their window busted out feel terrible about that I mean that's that just sucks so um, they uh, brought the truck back here and uh, they taped up a piece of cardboard in the window um, fine craftsmanship there but um, you know I just figured I could give them a PSA you know a public service announcement um, so Sharpie and uh, uh, stall racing vlog sticker and I'm gonna I'm gonna give them a tip for next time they're in town help them avoid any of these issues final preparations here before the heat races dad just pushed up he's way up there now Ben is finishing up a gear change and I last night took a swing for it ran it in the morning warm-up I've got different pills in it adds more caster uh, if it means anything to anyone the stock ones are 0.5 and these are 1.5 um, I truthfully should know what that means but I don't uh, but I can tell you that the cart had a ton of caster in it my arms were probably more fried 
from that one warm-up session than like an entire race maybe both races so it definitely uh definitely was noticeable and i'm gonna run i ran my fastest time i had all weekend in the morning warm-up within lap two and then i got slower and slower so that tells me my tire pressure needs to be dropped um so that's the only change i'm gonna make i'm gonna drop the tire pressure down just go out and race i start 21st been over here i think he starts 24th so we're close and hopefully we can hook up and work together um because ben was ben was quick in the morning practice too so by quick i mean for us right we were still in the 20s for time wise but um i think we'll i think we can move forward i'm here trackside with Tad stalls Tad, tell me about your weekend well you know racing's a tough sport we face the toughest of it but you know we've been rich and we haven't given up and it's game time and i think that's where we shine you know strong racing goes to the front What is our goal? Number one, Matty. That's always the goal. We have no other goal. We go to win. We're out here to, for one reason, and that's to win this race. You heard it here first, folks. Stall racing, not realists. <laughs> so we're here looking at the final. Uh, after the long drive down and everything and worrying about all the starts, this is the, the second national race I've done, and uh, I've worried about the start every time, and every time these old guys come through, uh, myself included. We've had clean starts there. Tony and Todd get to banging a little bit, and they've still been banging off each other a little bit about that start ever since. I've heard both sides of it. Uh, but we got through clean, and uh, their banging allowed me to get by Tony and uh, follow Todd, and just got off to a pretty good start. Uh, cart was running good. Uh, was. We're really kind of hoping that the, some of the guys up here in front might uh, get to banging and leave a door open and you can see them looking and uh, I kind of lagged back with that thought and maybe shouldn't have there because Todd got by Marcelo and uh, from here on out throughout uh, the rest of the race all I saw was that uh, 682 bumper and but it was a it was a fun race beautiful day move on I had uh, I had Marcelo covered in a couple of places, uh, mainly down this back straightaway. And if you remember last race, I talked about this turn right here and how I couldn't nail it. And uh, though I still wasn't perfect, I could get an excellent run on Marcelo uh, uh, at that point, probably three to four car lengths. Uh, and then he, as you can see here, he's pulled away again. So it was. Uh, uh, Poor, poor job of me in other parts of the track, but here you can see, uh, again, get a good run. I'll come right in on him and, and take a look inside, and I think maybe I've got a chance, but uh, uh, he was having none of it. It was, a, it was good, good driving on his part, shutting the door like that. and um, You know, going through this part of the track, uh, coming up, I have uh, what you're about to see is a very rare good hairpin out of me. And I get a good run on him. It may not have been that good on my part, maybe a bad one on his part. And so I decided to take my chance. And you can see how gracefully I handled it. Uh, look at that squeal. Uh, anyway, went wide, couldn't hold my line very well, and uh, it cost me speed. And in a moment, you'll see that Marcelo took advantage of it down there on the inside. Uh, didn't want to give it up there, but he held his line, and uh, it was quicker. So again, you know, this was from a lap about lap three to about lap 16 that uh, this type of dancing went on. Um, looking inside, I had had one real good part of the track and, and he had me covered elsewhere. I kept waiting for Tony to bump me because um, I knew he was back there and Tony was probably faster than me. But uh, here I take a, take a shot and again, too wide, clean racing. Um, but I think if I could have got uh, uh, if Tony had got by me, he'd have probably pulled away from me, but at the same time, he, he uh, right in here, I'd be waiting for a bump and, and didn't get it. So, um, this is the last lap. I took my chance. Now, look at this gracefulness. I squealed the tires. I just waited for a boatload of carts out to my left. They never came. So, I decided to nail this turn as well. Look at that. Hey, uh, terrible driving, but fortunately, I think I must have just scared everybody. 
um, and held them off and we're heading in here under the hairpin and, and now one turn to go until the finish line and I'm just hoping I don't see anybody and and I didn't so it went from 14th to 13th okay so start number one and you'll understand why I say start number one here in a little bit inside line gets a nice jump um, pretty much make up three spots right there but that's really what caused most of the chaos for the outside line it was between one and two so I went from 21st to right now I'm running 12th so this is still the first lap here running 12th gonna be able to take advantage of our, our pal Matt getting punted right there around he goes and then there is uh, Nick Nick feeling a little froggy trying to make a move and I say not today Nick <laughs> so I keep 11 they throw the red flag here because there was a pretty bad wreck that you'll be able to see on Ben's footage um, I hope the guy's all right because it was it was a pretty crazy wreck and then I realized wait a minute red flag where's my brother takes me a second but I found him he was okay for the restart cup cars decided to start everyone based on their original starting position so I had to go back to 21st and we started single file um, and you're gonna see that there's a few attempts here that did not go super well on this one um, it actually pushes my pushback bumper there on the front it dislodges it so it's dragging the rest of the race took out a number of people right there um, so this is the third attempt uh, actually get rolling on this pretty uneventful um, which is the benefit of the single file definitely understand that so selfishly I wanted to restart in 11th but um, I didn't deserve a lot of I benefited from from chaos so um, here I'm gonna come up on uh, the guy that lost his bumper um, so he got it worse off than I did on that that restart um, right here gonna make a move on 76 inside of the hairpin coming up here to the hairpin again um, that 507 cart there on the left is our pal Brennan from uh, Newcastle and he's stupid fast and like with hindsight I would have just pushed Brennan I don't know what I was thinking in the moment I don't think I recognized it but I should have pushed Brennan um, but I didn't so right here uh, the 24 kind of gets squirrely causes me to get squirrely um, so Brennan gets by me going through the S's here the 02 gets a really nice run out and uh, next couple corners we go too wide in the moment I thought this was my fault completely and I wave them on by after seeing the video kind of get squeezed and it was just really just kind of a racing deal um, but regardless I ended up waving him by so came up on the 338 here and, and my goal was to pass him on the straightaway so to do that uh, I was just gonna try to keep as much momentum here on the exit exit wide pull the inside and make the move but let's talk about handling and setup to the cart we just tried to get side by all weekend and so I pumped a lot of caster into it and you can see my steering wheel here like I am wrestling with it and that was just all race right I mean it ended up like cooking my arms they were just fried here I'm gonna lose a spot to the 76 as he goes to my inside here's Matt um, come up here got a nice run down the straightaway playing on making a simple pass down the inside here and like I was like just could not keep from just my back wheel hitting him so that was my bad wave him on by gave him the spot back and um, gonna make another attempt here to make it a, a cleaner move so gonna run to his inside here and uh, able to make the move I finished 18th I don't love 18th, but also that's the hardest I've ever worked to finish 18th. My best time was a 48.5, which was a big improvement from the start of the weekend. Um, like it gave me a fire to come back and I wanna, I wanna tackle that track again and just prove to myself I can do better. Um, so overall, really happy we did that event. It was a ton of fun um, and uh, Hope to get back there and do it again next year. Cart was probably 
the best it's been all weekend and the driver was probably doing a little bit better um, I put like basically as much caster as I could get into that cart I've never driven a cart with nearly that much caster and my arms are like virtually useless right now it was very physical getting that cart around the track here we are uh final race of the weekend for charlotte um as you can see and i'm sure this is a surprise to nobody starting pretty far back here after the uh two heat races um <clears throat> goal was nearly identical uh to originally like you can see uh, obviously the mixing up there the 47 goes through like four guys we were like four wide there um just trying to stay back you know i i I was just trying to avoid any catastrophic damage at that point um, from the end of the weekend, so kind of knew it. We didn't have the pace there. Good news is, uh, talked to a lot of people, figured out a lot of stuff, and <laughs> we uh, we are abundantly aware now why we were so off. So that's at least great. Um, something to to put in the notepad for next time. But you can see, just kind of chilling, moving back a bit. The 05 was actually one of the faster guys. Um, he just had some unfortunate heat race incidents so um but you can see he moved through the field how you know i should have uh i feel like i should have if i were in this spot but um here's where things will get dicey here this is going into lap two still see great racing everywhere uh, everybody's side by side here but as we go into this right hander and then the left hander um there's a big wreck in front of me and i'm just avoiding like i remember i was actually hard on the brake to avoid that and you can see what happened as um some people weren't able to avoid this. So we'll watch here. Watch the cart get squirrely. 47 avoids it. I also narrowly avoid it. And then this guy back here, boom, just does not avoid it. And you can see, ah, uh, that's scary stuff, man. Even at the 206, we're not going nearly as quick. It's 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 crazy. So um, this ultimately actually brought a red flag to our race. Um, and it sucks, too, because, I you know, I finally got up with Jorge, that, that dude. Um, but we got up with Jorge, got by a couple guys, and uh, started moving moving forward a little bit. And uh, it, it was unfortunate because we wound up just completely restarting the race after this um, because of the red flag that was brought in from the crazy racing. So um, unfortunate, you know, Jorge gets a little lucky here because you know I was clearly going to pass him, and then I see the the red flag stuff coming out. So we're just on autopilot there um, as as we kind of await the fate, uh, but. Not too much later, we get it started, uh, kind of. <laughs> I say kind of because it took us about 10 tries to actually get this going again, like the single file restart just was not working, but eventually uh, we got it working okay, I guess. Um, we did the single file restart, but I actually started right behind Nick. It was back to like starting spots, not based on um, what happened the first two laps. So. Um, Nick and I are going by this guy. Didn't have a bumper, which is really unfortunate having the, the, the final. It's unfortunate for him, but it's also unfortunate for our, the guys behind him. Uh, you know, we can't really, like, bump him or anything, so we're just kind of staying away. So Nick and I, um, like the entire weekend, you know, we were always kind of right there next to each other, just doing what we could. Um, a move gets made on me here to the inside. Well done, well executed. Um, clearly I'm frustrated. You can see that with my little hand up here. And then we got this guy in the, the 610 here. He was also going for it. Might as well. I mean, everybody's getting by me. Um, but he's able to uh, ultimately complete this pass here. Um, and I ran most of the rest of the race behind him, I think. So I think he actually gets a little bit of space between me. Um, but I, I do eventually kind of pull him in a little bit as well. So it was interesting to see his line also in a Braille chassis, and I'm assuming, you know, he had the same issues that, that I obviously I don't want to set up, but um, there were a couple things that we definitely missed with these, but it was, you know, it was nice to run with another uh, another guy in red and just kind of see how he was taking the line and doing what he could to deal with the issues that I was having. So that was one thing I noticed right there, going through that left-hander, he carried way more speed. Like, I was on the brake way too much compared to him, at least um, early on, and that I was breaking way too early, so... There's quite a bit of a gap there for me to close in. Um, and I'm like that for a few laps. Like, he would just decimate me right there in that left-hander. And then this left-hander, oddly enough, I actually kind of pulled back into him. So it was kind of the opposite. I was I was breaking way too hard too early in the other one. Um, and then I was able to break a bit later in that one. So I think that was just maybe a comfortability thing. Uh, but certainly something that I, I could have done so much better um, 
and even there you see him exit that corner he curbed it a little bit but just the amount of speed you lose if you do have a bobble um, or if it grips up like the track was just so grippy and these tires um, on that track were, were something that we weren't prepared for I'd say so you can see him back on the 610 bumper here we're reeling guys in actually you know kudos to him I'm sure we were faster whenever he was in front than if I were in front so I was just sticking on his bumper pushing him whenever I could um, and we were just kind of reeling some guys in um, great job by the 610 here uh, I think we were gonna start catching him and then boom right there I uh, I had to call it a day it's actually interesting my my fuel line had a hole in it and so I was just bleeding out fuel and I didn't even notice it um, didn't even know it. so my day unfortunately was over right there